Hey, everybody, it's Roger King. Thank you so much for joining me. It is June 30th, 2023, and I wanted to jump on and tell you um, what I heard from my attorney actually today. He told me, you know, he used this phrase, and it's, it's one of those things that is just, it just sort of gets under my, my skin just a little bit, uh, even though it had nothing to do with the person that my attorney was referring to. Anytime somebody comes to me and they say, he's a good guy, man, my, the hair on my back neck goes up and I want to jump into some of the reason why. So before we start anything, um, I want you to hit the subscribe button below because I'm going to talk about a lot of things that a lot of people are not talking about. And one of those things today, so hit subscribe. One of the things I want to talk about today is this idea that just because somebody is a quote unquote good guy or a good person doesn't necessarily mean they're competent. It doesn't necessarily mean they have your best interest in mind. It doesn't mean that they have the fortitude to stick through uh, the challenges that are inevitable in every real estate transaction and a whole host of other things. Just because they're a nice person doesn't mean they should be your partner. And nothing really expre expresses this story more than my experience with this, uh, this guy I met years and years and years ago who I had formed a good working relationship with He'd loaned some money to me to fix a house and I lost some money on that house and I paid him back. And I thought that he would agree that that's our working relationship. You know, there's people that are working together. They take care of each other, regardless of the wins or the losses. We make everybody whole and we move it forward. That was an assumption I had. And it's a wrong assumption. It is a bad assumption. It's an incorrect premise that people honor the integrity that the other person brings to the table. So when I say he's a really good guy and he stole $500,000 from me, that's the title of today's talk because he was a really nice guy. We were really good friends, I thought until I learned that he was uh, taking money out of the projects and a, a whole host of other things. So one of the different things is having gone through multiple properties and projects with this particular person, it made sense after I had removed myself from that relationship, all of the problems with this idea of he's a good friend of mine, and he's a good guy because it turns out that he didn't sign a whole host of documents that he was supposed to sign. He didn't record a whole host of documents that he should have recorded. And it turns out eventually years later that another investor had very similar problems and decided to call the SEC. The SEC did an investigation on this guy. The SEC discovered a ton of information and they eventually, I don't know if the correct term is charging this guy or what the terminology is, but they ended up getting a judgment on this particular former partner of mine. And it was one of those situations where I stepped back after the emotional abuse of being in a relationship, you know, a business relationship with this guy and understanding that there are lessons to, we have to learn out of these things. There are lessons that we have to write out. There are things that we have to pass on to other people so that we know if anybody starts operating in this same way again, we can shut it down. If we hear about somebody operating in a particular way for other people, we help them, we educate them 
so that people aren't stuck in a sim similar situation as I was stuck in. So people aren't stuck in the worst positions where other people got really uh, taken advantage of by this guy. It's a really super sad situation. And I think that, uh, you know, some of the lessons, th three big lessons that I have on partners and in particular, this situation with this particular person, um, you know, I, I had to understand later on. And I guess the lesson here is, were the documents ever signed? When we were doing the deal, I did my best to stay on top of getting those documents signed. But it turns out they never got signed. They never got recorded at the county courthouse. And that caused me a great deal of pain and suffering. And I know that it has caused a lot of other people the same amount, if not more, pain and suffering because what happened to the money? What happened to the security? All because he was a nice guy? Everybody says this particular guy, really super nice. In able, in able to actually execute and get the stuff done. And it costs millions of dollars to a lot of people across multiple, multiple projects. The next thing, probably lesson two in this is never wire money to a guy like that, unless you've got a long standing positive experience. And even then, you may want to check that. But if you aren't getting your documented, recorded security information right away within the next couple of days, then you've got, you know, you may run into an issue. I would never get into a situation where you're wiring money to a person with the promise that we'll get the documents done. Again, unless you really know this person and this person has performed for you, and they have gone over and above, above and beyond any sort of reasonable problem solving to make you either whole or to get you caught up or to, to really extend the relationship and the trust that they're trying to establish with, with you specifically. So I would urge you not to wire money directly to the person, wire it into escrow. And I think that the third really super important uh, lesson in all this is following up. I remember going through and saying, hey, I need to get this document. Hey, I need to get this. Hey, it's, I know it's the fifth time. I'm sorry to bug you this week. Need these documents signed. And I remember seeing as I was doing some uh, uh, discovery research for a lawsuit that I eventually got into this guy that my assistant she had been emailing him too. And so I had all of those emails from both myself and my assistant saying, get us this information. You promised us information last week. It's now Thursday and you didn't send it. So get us the information, follow up, follow up, follow up. So those are three really important lessons. Um, you know, uh, are the documents signed? I guess follow up could be number two to that. And then don't wire money directly to that person. Wire it into escrow. And, you know, I want to take a step back from, from sort of the, the lessons and everything and, and touch on how does this kind of fraud impact people? And aside from the monetary loss, a lot of times people will beat themselves up for being defrauded. I know I have. Maybe you have too. And it's not one of those situations that's easy to get past. And we start to second guess ourselves. And we start to think everybody is in a particular, you know, bad person, pretending to be a good person sort of light. I've gone through the situation with this particular guy, with maybe two others, where they've stolen money or they've tried to dupe me in some form or fashion, and they've just not uh, done what they've said they were going to do, even embezzling cash. And I have to remember, okay, Bernie Madoff, biggest Ponzi scheme ever, extraordinarily bright people invested with him. 
and it has nothing to do with intellect, your trustworthiness, your ability to, you know, determine who's a good guy versus a bad guy or a bad guy versus a good guy. It has nothing really to do with any of that. It has to do completely with the idea that there are people out there that either don't have the chops to finish something to get it done, or they don't have the ability to deal with their emotions in a way that they want to honor the agreement with you. There are some scumbags out there and there's just nothing you can do about it. So when people come to me and they say, I can't believe that guy screwed me over. I say, look, Bernie Madoff is the perfect example. You know, thousands of people were burnt by him. Brilliant people, brilliant investors believed in what he was sending them. I mean, Bernie Madoff actually created fake statements and sent those to his clients. So if they're receiving a client, and this guy, Madoff, has all of the information uh, in, in a really well-presented format, uh, and everything is seemingly above board, how do you, how do you verify it all? Well, I mean, you could go through and really co you know, go through with a fine-tooth comb everything that he puts in the report for sure. And you know, arguably you should. But we invest with people like Bernie Madoff or other general partners. We come in as a limited partner for real estate stuff and we want a passive income or a passive investment. And it's difficult when we're in the passive role, passive mindset to transition into every month or every quarter, I'm going to go through each property. I'm going to make sure all the documents there's nothing new recorded on the uh, at the county's county recorder's office. It's tough to follow up on all of that stuff each and every month because again, we're trying to invest passive. If we're active, you know, we're in the we're in the trenches day to day, and I think it's important to be able to make sure that your uh, partners are doing what they say they're going to do. Uh, but when you are in a situation like Bernie Madoff sending you fake reports. He's an accredited, you know, I don't know if he was a registered inv uh, investment advisor or what what he was, stockbroker, or I don't know what his designations were. But people trust him. He obviously had, what, $4 billion under asset, assets under management or maybe $400 billion. I, I don't even know. But a lot of people got duped by some of the smartest people in the world who just had no conscience. They just had no ethics. They had no morality. And they lived these fantastic lifestyles because they can't, they could. So when somebody says, just to recap it, when he's a really good guy, I don't believe that that is a factor. And if I want to do business with, him. just like anybody coming to me, Hey, I, Roger, you know, your friend recommended I do something with you. Um, they said, you're a great guy. I'm like, I'm a great guy, but I'm also an ethical guy. I'm also a moral guy. And I want to make sure that you're protected because you're entrusting me. And that's just my personality. It's not everybody's personality, but I want to take care of people as much as I, and best as I can. So anyway, just a lesson, a few lessons that I've learned how not to get sucked in by He's a nice guy, uh, scammers, and uh, I hope this helps. If you get a chance, please click below, write a question, make a comment. Uh, I'm really engaging with everybody right now, and I hope to see you guys in the next few days. Uh, today's Friday, June 30th, 2023. We're gonna, uh, I'm probably going to post something on Monday, take July 4th off. But uh, anyway, thank you again for paying attention. If I can help with anything, let me know.